You're about to hear from a man who says he knows his wife was going to die sometime in the next year, but he does not believe she was supposed to die so soon. When we reached out to Albany Med to discuss his concerns, they invited us in with the hospital CEO saying they are, quote, on a journey of continuous improvement. Mourning the loss of his wife, Anna, Bob Simons reached out to CBS 6, hoping to get some answers about the quality of care he says his wife received in her final days. I just want the story out there so that this hospital is held to standards of any other company out there is to take care of when my wife signed into that hospital they were supposed to take care of her and they did not bob was one of hundreds of people to comment after our first story aired about long waits in the albany medical center's emergency department a stage four cancer patient bob says anna spent close to two days in the emergency room after her regular doctor told them to go and have some fluid removed from her lungs anna arrived by ambulance on the morning of january 5th this photo is anna at 9 37 a.m as she waited at home to be picked up this one timestamp 2 59 p.m shows anna sitting in the hallway where bob said she was left waiting for 15 hours. Here she is at 12.07 p.m. on the 6th, now inside a private ER space. Nobody came in again the whole time I was there. Nobody was, was helping her. No IVs, no water, no food, no medicine, no nothing. Anna was eventually admitted to a patient floor. This photo taken the morning of January 7th. She died at 3.31 a.m. on the 9th. What do you want to say to Anna? Wouldn't be enough words. I want her back, it's, but I can't get that. It's unclear if Anna's ER wait times contributed to her death, but CBS 6 reached out to Albany Med to share Bob's concerns. Dr. Dennis McKenna, president and chief executive officer at Albany Med, agreed to sit down with us. How does that hit you when someone feels that way? Well, look, I mean, the first thing I'd say is that's difficult to hear. Right. I mean, that's difficult to hear, first of all, as a husband. Uh, it's difficult to hear as a physician. And it's difficult to hear just as somebody who went into health care because he wanted to help people. McKenna says while he can't comment on specific cases, he can comment on how they operate. Certainly nobody has arrived to our emergency department and has not received any type of care for 24 or 48 hours. What happens is when you first arrive to the emergency department, um, almost immediately you check in and we have a physician at triage and that physician will assess the patient. McKenna says patients are treated according to the severity of their symptoms. On any given day, Albany Med's ER sees between 250 and 300 people come through their doors. About 110 of them will need to be admitted. There is no question, Jackie, that we would prefer that every patient who comes in to the emergency department immediately makes their way back into the emergency department. But when we have the people upstairs who can't be discharged, and so we have that backlog. We have 30 or 40 waiting to go out to a nursing facility. If you went into our emergency department and you said, how many people are down in the emergency department waiting for a bed to open up stairs at Albany Med? It's about 30 or 40. And if you said, how many people are in the waiting room waiting to come into our emergency department? It's about 30 or 40. So you begin to get an idea about this healthcare ecosystem. We had a comment from a nurse who said if he would just come down and see, he would realize we have a big problem here. Do you have a response to that comment? The answer is I, I, I certainly appreciate the fact that that employee who said that, you know, would like to see me. Uh, I like to be seen. Um, we do senior leader rounding every day. Uh, we have, a, we have a, an executive team every day after our daily safety brief. We will go to different parts of the, of the campus. McKenna says he usually works two shifts per month in the emergency department himself. He is confident patients are receiving world-class care and are treated according to protocol. If someone needs emergency surgery, if there's a patient in labor, if there's someone having a heart attack, we're going to bring them in. We're going to find room. And then I think we still provide safe care to those people who are in the waiting room. But to the people that are saying that's not happening, what's your message to them? I can tell you, Jackie, you know, if I'm awake for, you know, um, 18 hours a day, I'm probably thinking about this 17 and a half of them, right? Because from the moment I get up to the moment, you know, I go to sleep, we're thinking about how we can do things better here. To those people who feel like their experience wasn't what they had hoped for, I will tell you we take them all very seriously. And every letter I get, every single letter I get, uh, we, we respond to them, we look at it, 
and we get back to them. And that's my commitment to, to you, and that's what my commitment is to your uh, viewers. McKenna says anybody who has questions about the level of care they are receiving can ask to speak with an attending physician. He says there are usually four to eight of them on staff in their ER at all times. He says he will personally take a look into Anna's case for review. For CBS 6 News, I'm Jackie Slater.